Hey everybody, Matt here. Today I'm going to start unboxing this new 9 inch benchtop bandsaw that I got from Harbor Freight. So there's a bunch of reasons why I wanted to get a bandsaw. I don't have one right now and I have noticed that many of the other YouTube woodworkers they all have bandsaws, so I figured I needed to get one and try it out. I will admit the other attractive feature is that I could go online and get a 25% discount coupon and use it to Harbor Freight. So it makes this tool very very inexpensive I think the sales price is typically around 129 139 something like that $139 with a 25 percent coupon that really knocks it down quite a bit so here's the label on the machine with some of the specs it takes 120 volts to AC 60 Hertz power draws two and a half amps Runs at 1725 RPM. It's got a 9 inch throat, so we'll, we'll look at that a little bit uh, later. It's capable of taking 1 8 to half inch wide blades that are uh, 10 thousandths or 0 0.01 um, inches thick, and the blade is 62 inches long. The blade speed is actually 2,460 feet per minute. And this is the size of the tabletop. It's just under uh, one foot square, 11 and three quarters by 11 and three quarters. So this is what you get in the box. Bandsaw, there's a blade installed, a cast aluminum tabletop, a couple of Allen wrenches, handle, open end wrench, miter gauge. The motor uses a three prong outlet, so it's grounded. Looks like there's a dust collection port right here. So let's get started and put this thing together. So I've gone ahead and read the owner's manual and the safety instructions. I do recommend that you read these and understand how to operate the machine safely. So we're going to go ahead and assemble this now. It's pretty straightforward. We're just going to mount the tabletop and then adjust the blade. We're going to start by removing this little piece right here. Just held on with a wing nut. That's what it looks like. We'll go ahead and put this back on once we're all set. Next thing I'm going to do is take the handle and just slide the flat washer onto the end of the handle. The handle actually gets screwed into a threaded hole right here, which we'll do in a minute. So <clears throat> the table gets mounted by sliding the, the blade through the slit. And then we're going to pull this knob out. And we're going to kind of tip the table towards us. get it in there like so. Let me zoom in and show you a better view. So once again we're going to take the table and slide the blade through the slit in the table and then we're going to pull this knob out and we're going to tip the table towards us and we're going to set the toothed part of the table onto the toothed part of the knob and then there are two little round bushings right here that ride in this arc on the table, like so. All right, so once that's in place, we're going to take the handle and thread it into this hole right here. And 
when that's tight, it keeps the table from moving. When we loosen it and turn this knob, now we can tilt the table. Tighten the knob, now the table doesn't move. Let me show you one other thing here. So I want to call your attention to this bolt right here. When I loosen the handle and turn this knob to tilt the table, as I bring it back toward horizontal or zero degrees, this bolt hits the case of the bandsaw. So the bolt is acting like a stop. And of course I can thread the bolt in and out to adjust its position for that stop to kind of adjust where um, adjust this bolt in and out so it just hits the case when the table is horizontal. So that's something I'll have to uh, take a look at uh, a little more closely. I get into place, just tighten the handle. Once the table is horizontal, which it doesn't look like it is right now, then I could move the um, needle pointer, just loosen this Phillips screw, move the needle pointer so it's pointing at zero, meaning the table is horizontal, and uh, I'm good to go. When they say this is a 9-inch benchtop bandsaw, that means it's got a 9-inch throat. That means the distance from the blade to the back of the, the saw chassis is 9 inches. Just a real quick check of the miter gauge to see what kind of slop there is. And it, there's a little, but it's not as bad as I thought it might be. It is adjustable for an angle. So you can use this latch right here to open the top door. And there's a latch down here to open the bottom door. So the way this works is the motor drives this bottom wheel. There's a belt here. It connects the motor output shaft to this bottom wheel and the blade tracks across these two wheels. So as this one spins it moves the blade and of course moves the top wheel. This is the tensioning mechanism to keep the blade nice and tight. Let me turn the unit around and I'll show you a little bit more about that. So this has a quick release blade tensioning system. Right now the blade is held fairly tightly in tension. If I rotate this handle counterclockwise, it releases the tension so that I could replace the blade. See now it's quite loose and I could pull this blade out and put another blade in, move the handle back the other way, and now I'm back in tension again. Let me show you the other side of this. Alright, so the blade is in tension. I'm going to take the lever in the back here and I'm going to move it toward me. And that's going to drop this whole upper wheel down via this cam mechanism right in here. And as that wheel drops down, it loosens the tension on the blade. Now I can replace the blade, move the lever back that way, away from me. And the, the top wheel goes back up, and now I'm in tension again. So another thing to know about these bandsaws is that in order for them to operate, the blade has to ride right in the middle of the wheels. So if I move it by hand, you can see that the blade tracks pretty well right in the middle of the wheel and that's where you want it to be. Let me see if I can shift the blade a little bit and show you what happens when it goes ahead and corrects itself. Alright, so what I went ahead and did is release the tension on the blade and just slid it back a little bit on this top wheel to show you what happens when I rotate the wheel manually Look to see, watch how the blade recenters itself. See that? So that's what you want.
The only other setup I'm going to do here is adjust these pins. There's a couple of little hex head or Allen key set screws right here. You just loosen those with the Allen wrench that comes with the machine. And then you just push these pins in ever so slightly so they just miss the blade as the blade goes by the pins. These are like little guide pins to keep the blade from deflecting or twisting too much. There's a pair of pins up here and there's another set that you adjust exactly the same way right underneath the tabletop. So one of the things I'm interested in trying with this saw once we get cutting here is to take a standard 2x4 which measures actually three and a half inches this way and re-saw it. That is cut a thinner slice off of this 2x4. That's referred to as resawing, and it's a common practice common thing that people do with their bandsaws. They resaw lumber to make thicker lumber thinner. So this particular saw has the capacity uh, to take a piece of wood that's up to three and five eighths inches tall. A standard two by four is three and a half or three and four eighths. So it just fits under here. So it's gonna be fun to try this and see how we do. All right, so I've got the table on. I've adjusted the tension in the blade. I've made sure that the blade tracks uh, nice and in the middle of the wheels. And I adjusted the guide pins here, set up here and a set below here. So as the blade passes the pins, it just misses, just misses them. So I think we're ready to plug this in, turn it on and, and do a couple of cuts. So just a couple of final things before I go ahead and power this on. I did go ahead and put the uh, the little wing nut assembly here on the end of the table again. So that's all set. And I also wanted to point out the on off switch. It has a safety key in it. So when the key is removed, uh, you can't actually power on the unit. It's only when the key is installed that the unit will actually turn on. So let's go ahead and do that and you'll hear how it sounds. So it's not too bad, it's not too noisy. It doesn't feel like it has a lot of vibration. I did use a uh, clamp to clamp the saw down onto the bench that I'm using it on. So we're all set up to make some sample cuts. I'm going to try cutting quarter inch MDF. This is 5 8 particle board, piece of scrap, and this is a scrap 2x4. So let's see how we do here. I'm going to start by lowering the uh, this kind of this foot. There's a little knob here that, that's loose, so it allows me to turn this knob and drop down. So I'm going to keep it fairly close. Tighten the knob back here so it doesn't move on me. I'm going to power on and see how we do. Okay, so that's a fairly clean cut. Had no problem getting through the material as you saw. That was great. So let me move the camera and I'm going to zoom in so you can see what it looks like from a little bit closer. So I'm going to try cutting the MDF again. This time you'll get a, a little bit closer view. That was quick and easy. Made a pretty clean cut. No problem. Let's try the 5 8 particle board. Okay, I'm just going to slice off a, um, an arbitrary amount here.
bit of tear out here, but it went right through the material. No problem. All right, let's try the 2x4. Grab a line. And try to cut it. Here we go. Well, you saw how easy and quick that was. Let's really go for the gusto here and try and resaw this piece. Okay, so it went right through that. I didn't really feel any burning. The blade moved around a little bit, so the cut isn't really very flat. But that's literally the very first time I tried to do this. So as you saw, there was no problems getting through the material. I think it's going to be a lot of fun using this bandsaw in my shop. Bye.